robot. Here's the definition of robot. A machine capable of carrying out a complex series of actions automatically, especially... Knock, knock. I hope it's you, because you're the best. <laughs> Let's play a game, Dad. <laughs> yeah. I'm very excited. I have a special guest with me today, and he's my favoritist, Jacqueline. So, Jacqueline, what is this robot that you have completely made out of robot parts and 3D printed a whole bunch? Wow, Liam, this is a really cool robot kit that I made so that lots of people like you and, and maybe a little bit older can make their own robot kit like this. How long did it take you to like, put all these parts together and make these 3D printed parts and put everything together and make everything work? So if somebody buy, gets all these parts and orders them online, then they can put this kit together in maybe less than one day. If once they have all the parts, the the 3D printed parts, if they get from me, well, um, they can just put it together. If they have to print those parts themselves, then that will take probably a whole day or two to print most of these white parts on their own 3D printer. So smart when you turn it on. And why is it just not say anything when you turn it off? So it's so smart when you turn it on because it has a microphone in here that listens that for your keyword that we have programmed to be Intellisaurus. And so whenever you say Intellisaurus, it wakes up and then listens for the next thing that you said, like a question or whatever. And that next thing is answered by either Google Assistant or Alexa. Well, we've been experimenting that for lots of years, and he's talking about this. Intellisaurus. What is definition of Triceratops? Here's the definition of Triceratops. A large wow. quadrupedal herbivore. How long did it take you to like try and make all these wires connected and lots of stuff? So that wire moves his tail, so his tail his head can move back and forth, and and his tail can move back and forth. What button does that? So you get this little controller. There's two ways for the robot to be controlled. You can use this little controller, which you can just control it directly. If you can see that controller, give us a big thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. Or you can use, let the smarts of the robot see things um, like faces or different objects and move towards those objects or away from those objects. Like not walk off the end of this table, for example. It'll walk around, but not walk off the end of this table by using sensors, something's down, to look for things that might be in front of the robot, like the edge of tables or things blocking its path. And this little hole right here in the middle of the shell um, will be mounted a camera. And that camera sees different things and does things like face recognition or... How many like baggies will it take in order <laughs> for it to like get ripped open and dumped out all the parts and put it together? You know, I don't know how many baggies it'll take. I know you're used to Lego baggies. And this is probably a 10 bag Lego kit. It's pretty big. It's got a lot of bags. How many sets does it take? Is this the gonna like come in several boxes? That There'll be three different boxes. One box comes with the base kit, which is the clear parts and all the motors and, and basic electronics. And you put that together, and then one box comes with all the white shell parts. And the white shell car parts can look like this Triceratops, or it can look like a Stegosaurus, or it can look like a dragon, depending on which white shell parts you put on. I know the dragon part was super exciting to Liam. And then the third box contains what I call the smart parts. Those are the things that do the Google Assistant or Alexa or do the object recognition. That has a Raspberry Pi Zero, an audio card, a speaker, and the Raspberry Pi camera. Well, I see these clear parts and I see uh -huh. the clear parts holding up the dinosaur robot. Right. Is, are these clear parts that come with the sets with 
Hold up the dinosaur robot so the kids can get it a bit easier, like, yes. right now? Yes, you're totally right. So that clear part down there is like a stand that he can stand on while he's turned off. Because when he's turned off, the motors might just go blue, 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 blue. But then when he's turned on, he'll stand up all by himself. But then if you want to turn him off, you can stand him on this nice little stand. So he can be off and still stand up nice. Is this going to come with batteries or no? So um, I don't think it'll ship with batteries. You'll have to get what we call 18650 batteries. There's two of them. And you have to have a little charger that you charge the batteries on separately. Jack, why did you put this number four here on this whole white part? That's actually really clear. Well, I'll, I'll zoom in with the camera so you can see that. There's little numbers on the clear parts, and those numbers correspond to the number of the motor that it's next to. Because you need to know which number each motor is when you um, put it together. You need to run the wires. You need to run the wire for motor four to the to the wire connector for motor four. And can you like buy separate kits of different types and just put them all together in your own way? And not have to follow all the instructions that for like to make this or the dragon. So the kit will come as um, you can either put the kit together just like it is, and you don't have to do any programming. You don't have to hook it up to a computer at all, and it will walk um, and do stuff like that. If you want to do the intelligent parts, you'll have to hook that up to a computer to sort of set it up and get it working right. Um, but all of that software is what we call open source software. So that means that you can get all the source code to the software and if you want to learn how to program, you can get in and modify that code and change it and do different things for anybody who wants to do any of the software that way. These white shell parts, remember I said you could 3D print those yourself, right? These white shell parts. So that means you could use the Triceratops or you could use the Stegosaurus or you could use the the dragon, but then you could pull it into a program and modify them yourself and make some other animal, right? Particularly the white shell parts, you could make a different animal, a different dinosaur or something else. So you're saying you can make your own prehistoric animal? If you want. Can people like show you what they have made and say, well, this is what I made, do you like it? That would be super uber cool if people like made the changes to either the software or the shell parts or anything and uploaded pictures to me, I would be so excited. Very, very excited. I'll take that part then. <laughs> You're gonna do that? Okay. <laughs> Jack, what do you think we turn it off and show all the facts? Tell.